We're checking out wineries in Sonoma Valley, California, the birthplace of the California wine industry. Welcome to another edition of Journey with Josh. Hello fellow travelers. If you don't know me, I'm Josh and I'm a registered nurse that likes to travel. For the returning viewers, thank you. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Today, I'm at Bricoleur Winery in Sonoma Valley. I'll put the link in the description. We chose Bricoleur because they have a great story to tell along with their great wine. Their goal is sustainable farming with fresh fruits and vegetables and supporting the community. During the summer and fall growing seasons, they provide the Redwood Empire Food Bank kitchen with hand harvested produce from their farm. There's a pond with floating lily pads and ducks and koi fish. There's even an olive grove with more than 200 olive trees. You'll find a variety of wines at Bricoleur from rosés, pinot noir, sauvignon blanc, and chardonnays. So this first one here is the 2020 Rosé of Grenache. So you can already see in the color of these two wines, this one's a lot more light pink, more blush tones to it. And we also, it's coming from Kick Ranch, and we only age for about four months in stainless barrels. So this one here, very light bodied Provence style of a Rosé, really nice fruit forward, kind of grapefruit watermelon notes on here. And then the second one is our 2018 Unoaked Chardonnay. So this one is grown on the property here, and we age for about six months in stainless, which is not traditional for a Chardonnay. Yeah, but yeah I was going to say, Chardonnay is normally in a barrel exactly. of Exactly, so this is wood. more Chablis style, but aging in stainless really lets the Chardonnay shine. Um, and it just gives it a lot more of a soothing finish, more green apple notes up front, but all around just very refreshing for a Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. And I'll let Chef here take it away and go over your pairing, and then I'll come back and check okay. in on you too. How are you guys doing today? Good, thank you. How are you? Doing great. Welcome. Glad to have you here today. Um, to start off our uh, pairing, we've got on the left side there to go with our rosé of Grenache, our play on a Korean barbecue bite. Um, so traditionally with Korean barbecue, you get all your, your meats and you've got your grill in front of you and you get to kind of build it yourself. What we've done is kind of built the perfect bite for you. Um, the biggest thing that you'll notice on this is that we've uh, substituted the meat with local oyster mushrooms that are grown right here in Sonoma County. Um, we've marinated that in a Colby beef marinade. So what that consists of is a little bit of kiwi, some sugar, some soy sauce, a little bit of ginger, and some lime juice as well. Really, uh, with these oyster mushrooms, they're still super meaty, so it's a really good substitution to uh, meat. Um, and it's you can't really tell the difference, honestly. So on the bottom of that lettuce, we've got a Dongjang aioli. Topped with the mushrooms, we've got a house-made Brussels sprout kimchi, some scallions, and some flowers from our garden. Um, with this bite, you know, with the rosé of Grenache, it's got a nice fruitiness and sweetness to it. This bite really brings out the uh, the fruits and the watermelon and strawberry notes of this wine really well, and you get a nice balance from the saltiness and the sweetness of this wine. So it's just a really clean, refreshing bite for you guys. Then on the right side there, to go with your unoak chardonnay, we have caramelized carrots. These are grown here on our estate. Vaudavon yogurt on the bottom and some more flowers and a little bit of pea shoot as well. Um, with this unoak chardonnay, a little bit lighter citrusy green apple notes with that Vaudavon. It's got a little bit more of a sweetness to it. It's a French curry powder but not as spicy as like a Madras curry. So it really highlights that green apple notes and then the citrus really cuts through the butteriness of the uh, the carrots that have been caramelized in the butter and then fattiness from that yogurt as well. So another really clean refreshing bite for you guys. So enjoy. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Take a bite of that, Damn. then take a sip of the rosé. The rose, before you sip the rosé, smell it. It tastes like a whole different scent to it, and it like almost makes the wine taste really sweet. At the very beginning, mm. no, at the very beginning of the like late April. Oh my God, that's good. Yeah, I'm so excited. Everything sounds great. <laughs> I'll take you guys. Did I give you a few of those? Yes, but not Clark. Okay. Here's that one. 
Very different taste between these two rosés. Oh my god, that is so good. So not only do they do wine tastings, they also do food pairing, which is what we're doing today. Free food. And this is the Chardonnay. After food. Does it change the flavor of either one? <laughs> so. Keep co keep recording. You, you normally don't like Chardonnays, but this is a Chardonnay that's aged in steel barrels as opposed to oak. What's your impression? <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't have um. It doesn't have that rotten fruit flavor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, normally a Chardonnay to me has a rotten fruit flavor. This doesn't have that. Okay guys, so I'm going to be starting with a Pinot Noir before the food. That would be a question for Chef. We don't typically but I know. It's okay if you can't. It's okay if you can't. Oh my god, that's great. The food is delicious. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that really changed the flavor of the Pinot Noir. will taste differently than this one. That really changed the flavor of the Pinot Noir. Good. Okay, guys, we have the last wine here. It is a Zinfandel, and it's paired with... What is this beef? It's a beef, beef, beef kefta. Beef, no, beef kefta. Beef kefta. Um, but it's really interesting. So I'm going to taste it first. Very, very. Now, eat the beef and taste it. It's very, like very front. Not a lot of tannin. I mean, it's got some, but. Taste the beef and eat it, and it's going to taste like. All of a sudden, grape juice. That's really good too. Very sweet. Brings out the sweetness of it. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> Very good. So we also got a little sample of their Sauvignon Blanc. And what makes their Sauvignon Blanc a little bit special is that when they age it, they age it um, in the oak barrels a little bit and then also in the stainless steel barrels. And what that does is that takes a little bit of the acid acidity out of it to where it is not as citrusy and that's the one thing that I'm finding in this. It's a very um, more round, fuller wine. Um, you can you can taste a little bit of the citrus in it, the grapefruit, uh, but you also get a little bit more of the uh, apple, a green apple flavor in it. 
It's a really, really good uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Uh, if you're ever in Napa Valley and you're stopping by here, uh, get a taste of this right here. Uh, I think you'll like it a lot if you like the Sauvignon Blancs. So we are having the best time here at Ricoleur. Um, they have gorgeous grounds. Uh, the olive groves are beautiful. The flowers are beautiful. Springtime here. You know, coming from Miami, we don't have springtime where flowers and stuff, but this is really, really beautiful. You're able to walk around and do stuff here. Um, you can walk around with a glass of wine. Um, you can buy bottles of wine if you want to. Um, yeah, this is really, really beautiful. I'm really enjoying this. Okay guys, so we have just completed this tasting. We're getting ready to go to the next place, but I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of um, what this was like, um, what we liked and what we didn't like. Um, this is basically a sustainable farm. Um, they have vineyards that spread everywhere here. They've got chickens, they've got many different places to where you can have tastings and stuff where you can have your group together if you want to and enjoy this wonderful weather that we're having here. Um, we had today the wine and food pairing tasting and I really enjoyed that because it gives you an idea of the, the way the wine changes flavors as well as the way the food changes flavors whenever you're having those together. Um, and it kind of gives you an idea of um, how that wine um, affects the food that you're having and, and an idea of what type of wine to pair with the food that you're having. So that's one thing that I really liked about um, Bricoleur. I love their story that they're, they have donated a lot of the food that they make, the, they grow on property to the local food bank. That's really important whenever you're a uh, business in a local area like this. This is r really rural. Yeah, I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. It's one of these places that had we not done the research, we never would have found this. I mean, Yeah, it's seriously. a winding road out in the middle of nowhere. You, you, get, you get off the main highway, off the California 101, and you have to go left, right, up, down, over, under, and you finally get here, and it's just, it's it's special. And the, the olive groves are beautiful. The, the entire grounds are just spectacular. If you just wanna go have a glass of wine and walk around and enjoy the day, this is the place to go. But they really, they've really done a good job, and I think that when the pandemic is over, this place is going to be one of the places that you're, if you don't have a reservation, you're not gonna get in because they really do a great job here. Yeah, um, they've also got a lot of parking right now, but once this place starts to get more popular, um, that might not be the case. Um, and when we did our research, when we were looking for places I specifically looked for places that were small yield, small production, and the wines that come from this vineyard, we will never see in Florida. Yeah, uh, we well, actually we'll... got a bottle of the Pinot Noir, and we also got a bottle of the Sauvignon Blanc, and the reason why we did that is because in Miami, we are never going to see this, and we're never going to see that bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. The um, only time I'm ever going to see this wine again is either if I order it online and have it shipped to my house or if I come back here again because they just, they they have such a small production, it's never going to get outside of California. So, 
that makes it really special whenever you visit one of these wineries is you know if it's a big winery like many of the ones the, a few of the ones that we visited yesterday um, they're fairly large wineries and you're going to find them in every supermarket you know for Behringer they have wines that go from five dollars to five hundred dollars but you can find them in any supermarket this right here you're not going to find in a supermarket and and this wine this winery here um, the owner the the, the guy that actually started it and bought it and everything was on site and actually came to talk to us and Mark is a very nice guy he was really interested in um, the people that were visiting the story that they had as well why they came why they chose uh, made you feel really special that's all I've got that's all I've got so on to the next winery thank you guys again for joining us if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to the channel it would really help Google like uh, Google <laughs> YouTube likes that um, and uh, don't forget to click on that notification bell um, thanks for tripping with me this has been a wonderful time